Okay, so we have so far talked about restriction endonucleases and recognition sequences. Now, there are many different types of restriction endonucleases and the most common restriction endonucleases used in molecular genetics research cut four base pair, six base pair, and eight base pair recognition sequences. So they bind recognition sequences with either four, six, or eight base pairs and, and cut these sequences. So if we were wondering, so how often, how often would a given a given restriction endonuclease appear in a, a DNA or the recognition site for a certain restriction endonuclease appear in a DNA molecule. Well, we have a formula for that. So let's see. How often should a recognition sequence appear? in a DNA molecule. So this has to, you know, the formula I'm going to give you assumes that the DNA molecule has a completely random sequence. Okay, so what is the formula? Well, the formula is one-fourth raised to this variable n. What is n? So n is the number of base pairs in the recognition sequence. Okay, so let's let's do an example here. What have we seen so far? Uh, we've seen the enzyme ALU1. We have seen that it has a recognition sequence of A, G, C, T, so four base pair recognition sequence, and I could put the complement in here, why not? Now if we use that formula, one quarter, one fourth raised to the n, where n is the number of base pairs in the recognition sequence, so that reduces to, because one raised to the fourth power is just one, and then four raised to the fourth power there equals four times four times four times four equals one over four times four is 16 times four is 64 times four is 256. So we should expect to see this particular recognition sequence once every 256 base pairs. So if we had a DNA molecule of 1,000 base pairs, and we wanted to know how many times we were supposed to see an ALU1, or we should expect to see an ALU1 recognition sequence, what we would do is just take this 1,000 and divide it by 256, and we get something like 3.9, or I'm going to say approximately 3.9. I could bring out, bring out my calculator. So this is a pretty easy calculation and it's an easy way to estimate the number of times a, a given restriction endonuclease should cut a DNA molecule of a certain length. Let's take a look at one more. So we've already looked at Hindi 3, which is a six base cutter. So cuts the sequence AAGCTT and we said it cuts here and here. It doesn't really matter for this um, for calculating how often it should cut a DNA molecule of a given length. So we can plug this length into the equation where n is 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, n being the number of base pairs in the recognition sequence. 1 over 4 raised to the 6th power equals 1 over 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay. And that should come out to 1 over 4,096. Okay, so, so given a DNA molecule of about 4,000 base pairs in length, well, we would expect Hindi 3, this enzyme, to cut, cut that molecule at least one time.
Now we don't know where it would cut, right? So let's say this is our DNA, it's 4,000 base pairs long. You know, we would expect it to cut one time and who knows where it cuts, right? And again, this is just a prediction based on the, the likelihood or, or, and it requires the DNA molecule, the position of the letters to be completely random and it will cut one time, but you know, it could cut two times, it could cut no times. So this formula is just a just an estimation about how often a given restriction enzyme, how often, how many times it should cut a particular DNA molecule. And I guess the concept here is that a four base pair cutter should cut a DNA molecule many more times than a six base pair cutter, which should cut a DNA molecule more times than an eight base pair cutter. Okay.